What'd you learn from last night? I'm nothing. Uh, based on what I've been seeing, again, none of it is surprising to me. Uh, he has an offensive arsenal, uh, the likes of, w of which we have not seen for quite some time. Uh, people his height usually can't handle the ball the way that he does. They can't shoot the ball the way that he does. They're not as fast and quick as he is. Uh, they don't have uh, they can't they don't have an inside outside game. They again they he can do it all offensively. He simply can do it all. And and again, the Spurs definitely are going to be better. Avery Johnson was absolutely right. I watched him after the game, and in the end, what you're talking about. Is a San Antonio Spurs team that's going to be well rested, and the acquisition of Marco Bellinelli, along with the continued development of Kawhi Leonard, is going to resonate. Uh, Manu Ginobili has to make amends for his sporadic performance. Had some good games, but some bad games in the playoffs. Tony Parker didn't show up for Game Seven. You know they're highly motivated, as well as Greg Popovich is. I'd say Skip, keep your eyes on on Kawhi Leonard. I think that he's aching, he's chomping at the bit to be more of a focal point of this team offensively moving forward. So I'm going to keep my eyes on that because just watching him play, watching him on the sidelines or whatever, I just see somebody uh, that's aching to be a bit more involved than he is. So you keep your eyes on that. But in the end, they've got the pieces that they have to be who they are, which is the San Antonio Spurs. But as long as KD is playing on this level, once Russell Westbrook returns, if he's healthy, I don't see anybody in the West really knocking off Oklahoma City outside of the Clippers because I think the Clippers' athleticism can really, really do some damage if Blake Griffin continues to play well and if DeAndre Jordan learns to hit free throws. But I don't know if I would even give them the edge. With the way KD is playing, uh, with, with Russell Westbrook and what he's capable of, and I can't say enough about how much I'm starting to really, really love this kid, Reggie Jackson. Mm. Skip, Skip, he's no, he's no James Harden. But this kid is no slouch. He is evolving. He is developing. And it's not just the game. It's the swag that comes with it. He is supremely confident, Skip. And those are things. This is a guy that is not scared to seize the moment. And he has the capability to make things happen. Oklahoma City is a legitimate big-time threat right now, especially the way KD's looking. That's all. It doesn't surprise me. But KD remains this aggressive. Look out. <laughs> that game should have been a blowout by the Oklahoma City Thunder, except for Kevin Durant's impossible 11 turnovers. Kevin Durant had 11. Stephen A., the, the NBA record for turnovers in one game is held by one Jason Kidd, 14. So Kevin was only three off the record. And by the way, he should have had a 12th turnover because he clearly shoved, I believe it was Bellinelli, do we have that play? Just shoved him and got away with it because, you know what, Kevin Durant is more protected by the refs. He, he's as protected as if he has six rings. So here we go again. See, we're seeing the play right now. Come on, that's not an offensive foul. So that should have been 12 turnovers. Again, Jason Kidd, I believe it was in 2000 when he played for Phoenix against your New York Knicks, had 14 turnovers in a game. So Kevin has 11, which helped keep my Spurs a little bit afloat. They had a marginal shot in the fourth quarter. But again, they got blown off their home floor in the fourth quarter, just the way Portland did last Friday night when Portland scored 32 in the fourth. The Thunder, thanks largely to Reggie Jackson, scored 35 in the fourth quarter. Eh, you're probably not going to win that game even at home. So that's my takeaway, Stephen A. What's your thought on 11 turnovers? You know, I had a long flight out to L.A. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I watched the game on the plane. I was lucky enough and fortunate enough that they had TVs on there. I got to the hotel, got some sleep, was very rested, hyped about doing the show, energized, you know, the whole bit. And then you mm -hmm. provided the perfect key. I mean, I'm mean, I just, you just, mm. just divided a cause for insomnia, for crying out loud, not a cure. Because here you are with your little soliloquy, your diatribe about Kevin mm. Durant. Skip, there are 82 games in a regular season. Turnover-wise, he had a bad game. That's it. That's all it is. The dude, did you see those two threes he hit in the fourth quarter when it counted? I saw did Tony Parker and Corey Joseph. Did you, did yes, you, did you, did you, I saw. He started, oh, he started out I saw. one of five. 
You know, I said the dude finishes with 36 points. He, he's, he's flat he, out balling. He shot those he's been threes with the his, way that he's his elbow was on their heads. <laughs> That's that oh, yeah. He's so, so much so, taller so, than okay. the guy defending so, him. Oh, okay. Well, what I'm trying to say to you is that he is 6'10. So what does he do? Listen, the guys that are his height, he shoots over them or goes by them. You're shorter than him, he shoots over you. He can do whatever, Skip. Okay, last quick point before we go. You brought up Kawhi Leonard. You said he's got that thing in him where he wants to take over on offense. I will buy that. What I won't buy is his specialty, defense. I was extremely disappointed in Kawhi last night because he doesn't play with much edge, as in Bruce Bowen Memorial edge, as in the nastiest defender once upon a time in pro basketball was ESPN's Bruce Bowen when he was a spur, a great spur. I agree with you, but I'm going to submit to you, Skip Bayless, you blaming the wrong dude. I don't think you should blame a Kawhi Leonard for that. I think we need to blame Bruce Bowen. You're always bragging about San Antonio. You're always talking about how much you love them. You're always talking about the relationship that you have with them because you helped them get rings, and we know what a great defender Bruce Bowen is. You understand? He's sitting there with his juicer, being all in shape, you know, bragging about how he can still play. How come you can't fly down to San Antonio and help this dude get a little bit of nastiness in him? I mean, Bruce Bowen comes on the set uh -oh. talking uh -oh. smack to me. He talks smack to you. He goes on Sports Center acting like he wants to be on the, the, the next edition of Dancing with the Stars, but somehow, some way, he can't find himself down to get down to San Antonio to school Kawhi Leonard on developing a little bit of nastiness. I think you need to blame Bruce Bowen for Wait, that. Wait, Stephen A., we got to get Bowen. out of here.